What's with the photo? Shoot the other day about Ingolos Yao. That's something I've never seen before. Look at it. Okay, right. Starts working. Yeah, it's following the signs. Yo, yo, yo. Maga figure out. Since part of the man, they've been waiting for him. Got got long little old vulalit. Back calling you lost. Not a shangi lost. You couldn't miss his rule. Yes, that's it. So, Matalam Khablis, it was never about the wings, Mfano. It, it's the fire in you. Yeah. I think there should be also be a territory tax. For instance, in order for Pakistanis to, to, to have ama shops, they must pay a territory tax. And that's uh, separate from a tax. Sure. So they must give back to the community. You understand? You can't be coming from maybe uh, another community and come to another community and ship out the wealth and not give back. Because that's the problem that most people have. Most people, they don't protect Amma um, Pakistan or Amma um, Somalians from uh, is xenophobia when they attack their shop because they don't give back. Sure. They don't do nothing for the community. This is The Hustlers Corner. I'm laughing because uh, our guest just said an interesting word. He said light skinned supremacist, referring to Penwell. <laughs> All right, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Guys, welcome to The Hustlers Corner as usual. Let's go straight to the chop chop sign on the count of one, two, three. Let's kick those likes. Click, kick, 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 kick. Thank you. Let's click on that subscription button. Click. Don't forget to switch on that um, notification bell. I'm quite excited. I'm back. Um, Peniel is back. We're back which are, with another exciting episode. I think before I start and I introduce the team, I would like to give permission. And this is even before I speak to my partners, Justice Behind the Scenes and Peniel. When you create content, obviously it belongs to this channel. And if you don't want other people to use it on other platforms or to post it on other platforms, you can regulate that according to YouTube. But I kind of believe because of the type of information or the type of podcast that we are, we would like for as many of you guys as possible to share our content. Not necessarily share it for the sake of just maybe people that have to be exposed to our platform so it grows. Yes, it's going to grow inevitably, but make money through us. If you don't have any other ideas of creating content on YouTube, you want to grow a YouTube page, watch some of our interviews, grab some clips that you think um, are worthy for your platform, use those clips or post them as many times as you want to to grow your platform. Basically, we're giving you a permission to... Um, uh, what's in? To... Jeez, pirate. Pirate! Just this one of I don't want to use the word pirate. One of you. Jeez. How are you doing, bro? Access, Buddha. I'm Kurt Holmes. Okay. Nice to see you. Always. No, always good to always. see you. Before we get our guest introduced, Mr. Peniel, um, this person, the first thing I'd say is, is a brother that I appreciate because when we were starting our Mofire business back in the day, he and his team were one of the first people. I think the first positive article we had was on Forbes in the US, Forbes.com. Shout out to my sister Farai Gundan who wrote that article. The one only article at that time was written by um, this guy that's here today. They profiled Mofaya. Mofaya was still new. We're getting heat, Peño. Yeah, I know. You I were, was watching. You, you were around when Mofaya was I was around. Right? I was watching you guys catching heat. Choo, 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 choo. Sure. Yeah, it's not passive. Yes, approved. Yeah, this is a poison. Nan trekwa o daki. Yo, ben treka. Yeah. But then there was a daki who came through and said, nah. Let's profile these guys positively. Dr. K. Sure, sure. Good to see you, sir. Nice to see you all. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, it's a heart filled with joy and jubilation to be afforded such a prestigious platform. Thank you, sir. Guys, this is not a prestigious platform, but the, <laughs> the only person that's prestigious here is him. Because he started a movement that is an African, but basically the African narrative of Vuga Dak, it says, wake up, black man. Black man, meaning the black race. It's basically an African narrative about an African and a world, world issues from an African perspective. In all efforts, the emphasis is on an African cultural regeneration or renaissance. Hence, always there is that striving for a unification of yesteryear memory with today's activity so as to have a properly gauged campus or campus to recognize the road tomorrow. Vugadak is an essential vehicle for Afrocentric products and services this stems from the lack of positive black narratives out there. It is important to make available for the African community positive symbols 
that truly reflect and represent who they are. Ladies and gentlemen, the founder of Vugataki, not only Vugataki, he co-founded it with other people. He also is a founder of Mamakia as well. And he's one of the people that have been very conscious in waking up the black race in South Africa. He's um, some of the amazing work they've done. They've brought in Dr. Umar Johnson to the country. And I saw a lot of Dr. Umar's videos before he became as popular as he is now. Those videos were trending. A lot of people started wanting to get interested in black consciousness. So they did a great job and they continue to do so. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the amazing in studio. Who's on it in studio, Johnny? <laughs> welcome the amazing Dr. Kulan. And I uh, thank you, thank you for the uh, for that uh, introduction. Uh Anya Bonga Kuluti uh Ningi Pelituba uh Doctor Kulani, I've I've met you once and I appreciate it. I came to Ikaslako. Sure. Uh so we've met and I'm very happy. I've been inspired, I think, by a lot of the content you've created on social media. Sure. I think your Facebook page has got a lot of followers and I'm I'm hoping you'll tell us about that. But I think sure. Just to kick off, who is Dr. Kulani Skosana? So, uh, Dr. Kulani Skosana, I'm a 31 year old from uh, Fosloras, Loras, uh, East End of Johannesburg. I'm the co founder of Vugataki, an Afrocentric online uh, platform that is geared towards awakening the black race. I'm also the co founder of uh, Mamakia Creations, and also, as well, we are pushing Vugataki Stockfell. Uh, Vugataki Stockfell has uh, recently uh, uh, invested in Vugataki Laundry, so we have pil uh, purchased a, a container. We're gonna start a laundry, Vugataki uh, Laundry. So Vugataki is going to be creating uh, ama spaces, tapping into different spaces. I was so like it's, it's broad. I was, Vugataki is for everyone. You understand? It's not just for me as an individual. I was. Sure. So yeah, yeah. So. Um, um, I like uh, entrepreneurship, yeah, well, and mm. I like like you would, like I'm a writer, you understand? So I'm a researcher as well. So most of the time, I spend doing research and development about Black economics, uh, African history, introspection, and African spirituality. And most of my body of work is out there on social media. They can just people they can just Google me, Dr. Kulanes Kosan. Jeez. Thank you. Uh, you didn't speak on your Facebook group because yes. I know it's got a lot of followers. Yes, yes. What is the purpose of that page, that group? Yes. You've spoken now about the stock file. You've spoken about your initiatives, yes. especially for people that are watching. Yes, yes. Because we spoke about Dr. Uma Johnson, who's a great black mind. Would you say you're of the same vein? Is that what you're trying to push? Is this almost your Afri forum for Odak out there? So in essence, like, um, our primary objective of Ivugatak, as the name Vele Isho Vele Vusumunt, is to awaken the black race. So, as Ivugatak, we want to counteract all the negative portrayal of Africans by the white media. So, when you look at the white media, it constantly portrays Africans as negative. Hence, why even when you look at Emo Fire at its formative stages, they saw it was a big giant that was coming, you understand? And then they started uh, writing uh, articles uh, that are negative about Mofa in order to inculcate uh, that thing with like uh, Mofa is low quality since where this black owned and all that. And so to make it synonymous to low quality and to make OT uh, anything that is black produces low quality. So as a media avenue, we want to counteract that with positive uh, images and messages and research and development and African history that will dispel uh, all the myths about Africa. What an incredible initiative. You know what he's saying? Just yesterday I was speaking to a friend of mine. So there's a company that is a, I think it's the number one African billionaire startup. It's valued at over a billion US dollars. Jeez. I remember when they first launched in South Africa. I was doing some work with them. They were still new. They were launching their footprint in South It's a Nigerian company funded by Africans living in Silicon Valley. Okay. But obviously they're spreading to like all over the world. They've gotten venture capitalists involved. They've gotten some funding. Their company is going really well. They're doing very well. Are you allowed Flutter to mention the yeah, uh, Flutterwave? Okay. Flutterwave. So I read an article yesterday on Flutterwave in Kizia. For me, I didn't even care if that article was true or not. Sure. What saddened me was 
the publication that had wrote that article in that all, in that narrative sure. is a black media company. Mm -hmm. and, I, and let me just read the headline. And um, obviously, I, I, I'm just trying to drive a, 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 and let me look for this article. Here it is. The article says, because I remember when these guys started and they, they are such an inspiration to a lot of us mm. that are growing our own um, African businesses and Flutter African wave. brands. Flutter wave, they've done very well. Africa's most valued, valued, Africa's most valued startup, Flutter wave, has been implicated in some allegations. Its CEO, such and such, has been accused of such and such harassment from employees, such and such, reading today's article of blah, blah, blah. For me, even if it's clickbait, yes. but for you as a black publication or that is African and writing about another African startup and opening line says, Africa's most valued startup and the name of the company has been implicated in some allegations. Yes. What does that company have to do with the owner doing one, two, three, and four? Shouldn't sure. they just go straight for the owner? Yeah. Anyway, we shall end that, we shall end that show because some of these types of articles are very damaging especially for a company like them that raises money from all over the world. Because those articles exist forever on Google, bro. Of course, they never disappear. Your page has got over 300,000 followers. Yes, yes. Which is a huge audience. Indeed. And to what you're saying, of course, the, we know there's a white supremacist agenda. Yes. So I'm a, I'm a non-racialist, generally, but I'm aware that there are bad white yes. people, there are bad Asian people out there, and they have agendas. Yes. And what you're saying is what you guys try to do is to push back on that agenda and fight against negative Portrayal. media such as this yes. to try and unlock and empower the black nation. Yes. Is it mostly just, is it just the mind? Is it just economics? Is it, is it complete? No, like uh, you saying Vuga Bonko Taki Vuga Taki business? No, like Vuga Taki, like Muntumyama. Like when I mean black, I don't mean black by the South African definition that includes Chinese and Indians and white uh, white women since well they are categorized as the previously marginalized. Sure. I mean with the African, you understand? African, like indigenous Africans. Sure. So Vugatak is geared towards representing them, promoting black businesses, promoting the black culture, uh, promoting African spirituality. You understand? So yeah, that, that's what we are about. Uh, Pro-black, unapologetically black. Where do you think the pro problem came in where we've got platforms like black media companies who are still bashing other black people? Where do you think the problem came in? The problem, For is, our that, people. The problem is that uh, most of uh, black owned companies they try to replicate our business model that are Eurocentric. So they're trying this publication maybe is geared towards pushing sensationalism, not elements of newsworthiness. So the problem is that when we start our businesses, we should uh, apply them in an Afrocentric cultural and economic orientation. Uh, having a black owned publication is not enough if uh, we don't have a pro-black narrative if the mind is not black. And so it's not enough to say, hey, now we have black producers who are producing content. If the content is not progressive, then the progress, the, pro, uh, the content is nonsense. Sure. If your platform is not adding value to the people, then your platform is nonsense. So we should be looking at uh, things like that and also look at our positions as Africans, which what situation we are in. You understand? Like, mm -hmm. Hence why I put emphasis the fact that media is a powerful entity. Even Malcolm X put into emphasis that uh, the, the white media is what is pushing what an anti-black narrative, you understand? It's going to make what the, the oppressed look guilty and the guilty look innocent. That's the power of uh, media. media. So let's use that power at our disposal. For instance, Hustler's Corner is a media outlet for the people, you understand? Yes. So we are fighting, you understand? We are fighting uh, all those anti-black narratives. Thank you, Doctor. I don't know if a lot of people know that some of our favorite publications in this country, you mentioned the Daily Sun. Yes. I'm not sure about Sunday World. I think your drums, your bonas, yes. they all sit under NASPAS, Media 24, yes. which was obviously built by the Afrikaans Bruder Bond. So sometimes it becomes tricky, Uti, which are the black media platforms in this country? Indeed. And part of my concern as well, because we're here in the Hustlers Corner, only virtual Mkuku, it's on an American platform. You're on Facebook, uh, which yes. is an American platform. I've been blocked. I'm blocked currently now on my page. Uh, the power of, if you're pushing an agenda, I don't know if you guys have ever been blocked or if you've personally been blocked um, in terms of trying to do that, because hmm. 
in trying to fit into their mold, whatever their mold is, they, they, they shut you down when you try and speak against what they stand for. Ah, indeed, indeed. And so I advocate for us as Africans to create our own uh, social media that are Facebook-like, like that are Twitter-like, so that we can compete with those people. Because Vugatak is 300k followers. If uh, Mark Zuckerberg... 300,000, Baba. Yes. <laughs> One day when I'm Yo. big, I have 300k. Yo, as good as, 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 as <laughs> one million followers. <laughs> but I'm an individual. I'm not a a a, a, a business. A insti- like. As, you, especially, especially an institution wow. of education. Exactly. Because we always say, "Oh, talk about funuk funda." They don't care about liberation. But here, 300k yeah. to liberate the black mind. That's on, that's special. Just on positive content. Yeah, positive content wow. and advertising black businesses. And I also get approached by uh, even my friend can tell you like I always I'm always approached by white businesses they want to uh, uh, advertise through us because they see the potential but I decline them you understand mm. I decline no white participation in our platform now Andy Lem I'm not Andy Lem Kutama <laughs> Black uh, Black Fest Vug attack <laughs> Understand. Sure. I have massive respect for Andy Lebele. Uh, hence why I put into emphasis Uguti we should not be pro-capitalist, you understand? So, um, as, as uh, capitalism should not just be which apply your as an economic system, it should be pl- balanced by communism, uh, socialism. socialism, and everything. Not to say which a country must be entirely socialist, or a country must be entirely, so it's a balance of everything. For instance, China, is, is, is like is uh, masquerading as what as a communist nation that's right? true so but it's but saying, china it's very true <laughs> but it's very right but but china is is pro-capitalist but they demonstrated that they are also socialistic you remember when uh, COVID started to transpire they told them we'd close all the companies we are putting our people first you understand the companies must close so all those restrictions i told you I so mean, I'm saying that this platform is geared towards putting African first, so that because white people they already have a platform as well. So if I give a platform to a white a businessman, I'm taking away from a black businessman. Sure. So to what was asking, do, do you have a balance for this is where we make money, this is where we're conscious? Because I think it probably flows on from the question of if white businesses want to advertise on your platform and yes. you say no, but yes. they can bring money which can go to uplifting blacks. Do you say no, as long, as, now, as, long as it doesn't align to our consciousness? Now, we are speaking about uh, advertising. So advertising is what is creating an awareness. So now as a pro-black avenue, if say I'm creating awareness for a white business, isn't that maybe me being a hypocrite? Mm-hmm. And say, well, the platform being hypocrite. Mm-hmm. So I'm, if I say I'm pro-black, I need to stick by that. So the name is Vugatak. So when you see, which means wake up black person, when you see a white owned business there, it doesn't make sense. Sure. You understand? So for instance, if say maybe for instance, must, must push a stock fella say to, strictly black people are allowed to be members of the stock fella so that they can have shares. We do not allow any white participation. It's not being racist. We are trying to counter uh, balance. And so we are trying to catch up. We are playing a catch up game. Because of the legacies of apartheid. Yes, all the legacies of apartheid. So we are fixing. We are fixing the mess. Are you are you willing to work with white people on any level? Uh, and and number two, uh, how do you feel about BEE or broad-based Black Economic Empowerment, as it's called now? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. so are you willing to work with white people? And how do you feel about BEE? Uh, as I alluded initially, that uh, as Vugataki, we don't work with white people uh, at any level because now, based on a uh, historical account, you understand, white people are very hard to work with, you understand, they have sabotaged many of our people. So, I mean, I'm looking at it from far, I cannot maybe uh, repeat the history, you understand, because. History is important. People they don't view history as so. I mean, when I study history, I've seen with uh, when white people they come in uh, to our project as is. They accumulate nale what you call the Martin Luther King. They are say USA in N. What is that? 
the Yama Yama black professionals, the, the movement. The NAACP. Yes, yes. You remember, it started as pro black and all that, and then it became distorted as time went by. And I also just recently found out also with the Black Lives Matter is also funded by uh, apparently George Soros. I don't yeah. understand. Jeez. But it is funded by a lot of white people. That's yeah. a fact. Uh, now, George speaking, Soros in particular, I wouldn't speaking know. Speaking of funding, Thomas Sankara teaches us that he who feeds you controls you. So mm. now, by virtue of them, maybe putting money for advertisement, that will like distort my narrative because the answers I'm talking about cars, I know Coca-Cola cannot maybe speak ill about maybe white monopoly capital because now we're chasing away Abantabazo advertisers. So Umuntu Magazo Fagimaru control will take the terms and conditions. So I'm avoiding that. So white money comes with what comes with controlling. Terms and conditions. Yes. You're avoiding to be captured. Yes, I'm avoiding to be captured. <laughs> so I mean I'm captured by play brands because I'm paid by play brands. So brands that advertise through Vugatak are the ones that are paying. While we are on black owned brands, let's talk about the black owned brands that we're wearing. I'm wearing this necklace from the Rosebank Free Market, sold by African Brothers. Then when you get a chance, go get it. What are you wearing? <laughs> I'm, wearing <laughs> I'm, wearing, I'm wearing Telentele. Uh, I'm also uh, having this side bag by, by what you call, call Mita Chapa. Nice. And also I'm, I'm rocking uh, what you call Via Future. Via, thank you. Via Future. Yes, yes. So we try however means that. So even my hair, I cut it from a black one, a black barber. Tango. It's pretty. Uh, my, <laughs> my little brother gave it to sure. me. I mean, you guys, drip, drip, chuluga. Ah, lay it in. Ah, remind me the name of this brand. Rural Postman. Yeah, but that's not the name of the. The name of the brand is here, man. Please read it. Please read it. It's here. Rural Lab Classics. Yeah, Rural Lab Classics. Ah, we're keeping it local. I'm sure no one has been able M1. We're so bored and we're going to get a trip, trip, trip. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and he's giving. Yeah? And he's giving dress by who? So it's spicy. Yeah. <laughs> dress by not, Adidas. I'm not even it's wearing sad. an underwear because there's no play going. <laughs> And we're drinking a black old one, so tell us, Penuel. <laughs> no, Mina, Mina, I wear black uh, in solidarity with uh, my religion and my culture, Penuelism, but uh, yeah. I buy my clothes from second hand. Yeah. Black, black people, yeah. uh, but I don't think it's black manufacturers, but I am in the process of manufacturing black because oh. I have in the past. Black woman is strong. Black is strong. So we, I, I do support black very much, but it's second hand. Yeah. Where they get it from, I, I wouldn't know. Right. But at least I know I'm feeding black mouth. Yeah, probably. His spirit lives in me. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. But uh, I try to support black as much as possible because yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do understand what happens when you give a rent to Oleti. Mm. I do understand what happens when you give a rent to Umchita out there that it, it goes back to a cast and it feeds someone. Yeah. versus if you give your money to someone else it pushes a certain agenda as we've seen i think even with our government mm -hmm. and i've said to people that if you claim to be conscious it, it's not just about who you vote for because by then it's too late it's too late the people that you vote for have already been funded by the people you claim to hate mm -hmm. and the reason they have power is because you're giving them your money mm -hmm. so you have to vote with your hand As i love what you said you have to vote with your hand that's why i took a conscious decision you know four years ago and i was like I'm gonna change this graph as much as I'm wearing local brands, but I think I'm wearing maybe five to ten percent of local. I think over the years, up until today, the, the balance has shifted. I think I now wear more local brands than I do international. And I've got my man, my old old jobs full of witches and yeah, because I don't you know what I mean? Like my mindset has changed. I'm more I think I'm more conscious than I used to be. And there's other things that don't mean much to me as back in the day they used to. Or maybe some clothes at the time, I'd probably buy them for validation purposes. Not necessarily valid to really look good. Sure. I was just buying it because it would be Louis. So that people can be like, hey, we'll go get Buddha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it wasn't for you personally and it didn't speak to your consciousness. And, you. and speaking of that, you know, I, I feel as if like if celebrities uh, were to tap into the culture of wearing local. And, listen, and also black brands, I feel as if like, they should endorse Amma celebrities, you understand? Maybe Taipa too and all that. Namma celebrities now on our So what's good what I like about him, which uh Utora Vele life, no more performer, no mention mina 
from I wanted to it rip my car. I mean, uh, yeah, he was good. Yeah, sure. I told him to sure. He was like, I'm gonna push him up and I'm gonna like I demonstrate what to things. So, I'm wearing trip the following day part, and it's not like one side to which he pushing with oh, my boy is a castle, okay, holy cow, and sure. <laughs> but I want another thing. That's the spirit. I'm a celebrity. I feel like. I think it was back then, in, I think in 1999, mm. uh, the government official of Kenya uh, was mandated with it must wear local, I think, for a particular event or of time or whatsoever. Yeah, but, and then on that uh, event, this was cut less, it yeah, enhanced, uh, stimulated the local economy. That means the same thing as uh, Thomas Sankara. Thomas Sankara told his cabinet to exclusively wear a uh, a locally produced cloth called the the Faso Dani. You understand? So that hence why economy, yes, yes, Pekina Faso was 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 like was booming during the presidency. Yaga Yaga Thomas Sankara because like he was pushing for local production. You understand? Mm -hmm. So if, for instance, our government were to restrict uh, the, the 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 import of maybe Amatloth and whatever, then push for local production so that we can localize our production and internationalize our distribution channel that's how we add value to the economy just like mr mkatsamu was here he spoke about yeah. uh, when the eff started they had something called the sakara clause yes. in their manifesto do you think and i'm asking hang on now sure do you think our local politicians would... <laughs> why are you laughing <laughs> why are you laughing i'm just asking Jeez. because and there's nothing wrong with Kappa, but i'm just saying because they are our leaders yeah do you think they would resort to um, um, such an, initi an, an initiative? Like, for instance, when you watch their press conferences all the time, you're always seeing, um, let me not call the brand, but the sure. water from, you know, you yeah, always see just overseas things. Yeah. They're wearing overseas things, they're driving German cars, but they speak something else. Yeah. But I, they uh, do the other. We, we bash America. I bash America a lot uh, because I think they spread fake propaganda. I think they bully other nations. Um, they're always about America. But there's something to be learned from there, that they care about themselves and their people. I think even a controversial figure like Adolf Hitler got a German clothing designer, Hugo Boss, to make local clothing for the Nazi soldiers. Mm. Then you got a German guy, Ferdinand Porsche, to create a local car brand in Volkswagen. So some of these nations that have done maybe atro atrocious things, they meant to teach us that guys, you may hate us, you may whatever, but the lesson here is be like us, be proud of who you are. Mm. I think in the State of the Nation address, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, uh, who I don't particularly like, did promote local brands. The clothes, the, the shoes he was wearing, I think were from KZN. The suit he was wearing had been tailored by somewhere. So there has to be a push. I know they're very far from it, very far from it. But I think you and I spoke about this off air, that sometimes we wait for our politicians. But if a big celebrity like DJ Spoo can lead and if other people mm. out there can say no i'm gonna do this maybe they'll catch on because their voters will be like and they might be like hey i think our voters actually care about what we're wearing and it's like because it means you're also voting with your rent and i know they are gonna capture you because you will be captured because you need funding you'll be captured by people that at least align with my interests mm. it's gonna take a long time and and I think even our leaders need to be mentally decolonized somewhat. Yeah, I think some of them are also not aware. They're not, they're not. Now, but they want that validation. Because, but we need to conscientize them as well in freedom. I and I, like I, I like the servant leadership. Yeah, I feel like uh, if maybe as, as the black nation, we should boycott. Uh, the, I think boycotting is the most powerful form of protest. I understand unlike just marching and what i think if you can boycott uh, the celebrities that don't support local brands i understand i don't i feel as if that will pressure them because when you start taking money out of someone's pocket that's mm -hmm. when they start listening do you think they should be forced so for I, example I, I you feel, have I feel, I feel like it's a moral obligation you understand? they should be like compared yes i think sometimes i want a situation you think about that if it needs to be good we take their cushy belt and hit them <laughs> i feel like <laughs> we should <laughs> do that <laughs> no, no, i'm not promoting violence i'm, I'm just saying yeah, sure. you, but i'm just saying with like Sometimes we're at that level, we're at the bottom of the economic food chain as Africans. So in order for us to catch up, I think we need to, 
Nama, 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 nama police as a sure. technician. Um, I'm asking this because if Vugatak is on a, an American platform, so if people boycott you and say, no, go on to a South African, I know there was Dot, dot uh, Afro, yes. uh, a lady that I, was, I knew, yes, a black yes, yes, female yes. activist. Um, yeah, feminist. Um, feminist, yeah. Mm-hmm. She had Dot, dot Afro. Yeah, yeah. He's got his own platform as well. And then as I was listening to Usbuda, even reading your profile, the yes. fact that he's not reading it in our native languages. Okay. Would you appreciate people boycotting you and forcing you to maybe write in his Zulu and going on to a South African platform or would you get angry like a politician or what a, like a celebrity would get angry like and me, say, good time, Machita, okay. come on, I mean, I feel like if someone wants to boycott, because obviously there are people who boycott Vugataki by virtue of Vugataki being pro-black, sure. especially black people, because black people, they, are only, they only boycott black-owned businesses. So I'm used to being boycotted, mm. you understand? So I don't have a problem with being boycotted, but as long as I stay... Uh, principled and true to my cause. I think that's the most important thing. You know? So, uh, speaking of boycotting, uh, I did put into emphasis that if Pele Saba boycott, it will push them because I mean, when, a, when a young person sees a celebrity mm. or a public figure wearing something, I'm inspired. For instance, celebrity Malzo, for instance, I, I posted that video of Mofa La Kulumba Numriggs, that guy from Generation. So there's this other guy, Nangatubu Kasla Ramriggs. He was like, hey, hey, homeboy, homeboy, son, say, get a Mofa Alina. Because what? Over Namriggs, I think, at very Mofa. We understand and to the issue, and we're. And thanks for, for pushing Mofa for free. Uh, you know, uh, they've never asked us for money. Sure. He never comes to say, let's do this. And f- because of that spirit, I now want to work with them yeah. officially. Yeah. Because at least now the company is starting to grow. There's certain people who are there for us mm. when we had nothing. Yeah. But now that we're starting to get little things, it's like young people who say to me, I want to be an ambassador of Mofai. But for me, the first people that I want to go spend my two cents on is the people who were there for They were ambassadors fight. before you. Yes, they were ambassadors by selling it, by living it, by even protecting it in the meat. Those are the first people that mean a lot to our company. Even the people we're going to spend with are people like him. People who wrote articles on us. No, it was not even about the money. Yeah. People like MacGyver. You know, a black-owned platform. He's shown all of us how this thing can be done. I want to advertise with money. You know what I mean? Those types of things where we're intentional about our... our, our <laughs> the, the Breakfast Club, a huge platform in America, with uh, Charlemagne, yeah, DJ yeah. Envy, Angela Yee. Yeah. I've seen on many episodes they've got him on fire there in the back. That was yeah. dope, man. Beautiful, yeah. and I think they under. I'm not sure if they under Revolt, yeah, Pete. I had. Yeah. Uh, Revolt has partnered with them, so okay. Revolt is a TV channel, sure. and that was dope. I mean, Charlemagne did not know me from Barb so Yeah. But once he found out about my story, he was just so excited. Like, no, bring it homie. This was from Africa. He was just putting it over there. Not about money. I saw the thing maybe for over 20 episodes. Yeah. Some of them are in millions of views. Mm. And I'm like, wow. You know, he didn't ask me for money. You know what I mean? Sure. I'm like, this is how it should be. Yes, no, to go tell us about it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you want to speak about these, yeah. these co- this convertible car you're on yeah, yeah. all day. I really... Uh, Series. Come so, on, three series. Uh, three series. Come on. Black on black. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, on 2013, so it happened that uh, I was a student at UG. So when Shala was in there, we called Maristin Hotel. Papa, you bring it up, Maristin. Maristin, you mean? Between you and the Newark. Sure. To the park. To the park. Yeah. So. Uh, so I mean, I, really, I used to be a dancer growing up, you understand? So I used to dance, dance on that day. Uh, the, the previous day I called, I had one Iplik beer from Mesquite. I was dancing, I was on that. So it was a competition, battle of facilities. The way I, saw, I was so good at dancing. Uh, I won the competition. I defeated U, uh, UP, uh, you know what you call vets. Uh, all the university, I was representing UG, and then I came up top. I won 5k, I also won the Black Bear, and sent Black Bear very really sang. You were still was, a student at the time? I was still at a, a student doing my last year. So now, I'm at obvious, I sang Chabli and Petit Black Bear, so I was having fun and all that. So it happened, Uguti, uh, 
Epsu Valley, there was a BP garage nearby, so only near Puma Valley. I was not yeah, a preaching. Yeah, you better call it a little preaching there. So, and then Bang Bang Mingunzi. Yeah, so it happens with uh, one of the person over Mingun's lap is like Lentona Nyayazi, much Ivan, understand? So, press a Lentona, which means like shoot this boy, you understand? Shit. So, I was standing on the bridge like this, you understand? So, when I lent Ambuza corner, this is a case, is a drain, it can be drained upon. So, this guy, Magazuti, so I understand. So, but I tell you, I'm keen to make a tool or none. So, I've been turned to a very poor fresh. I was like looking fresh. Then, my one Kumbang is Pamu, and then I had to. I wanna jump, so I had to shy him because I was flexible. Ah, I didn't even uh, think twice. I won't. didn't even think twice. Where they? I'm pegging a pan, so then I jumped, then I landed, and then I was unconscious. I won't. And then uh, I told you I treat kids exchange the following day, the street kids, and then yeah, and then I'm told I pick scene. I want to la papa zu mang meme za batata ngati ni asla ni na na bang bozu ting fiera ni because. The height layer fair, corner mm. fair. Fair even about doctor couldn't believe would I survived that. So it's saying bang to all the power and then bang is a spell and then I had a spinal cord injury. Yeah. So yeah. How has that changed your life? Ah, uh, like uh, I mean, I uh, tell you the truth. I am coward. Like I was, cause now I used to dance. Now I'm so was up there and like I'm the best. Yeah, but when I see people, I'm like looking at them and like. I can do better than they are. I could have done better. So I had to shift that energy. And I said, now I no longer uh, can dance, but now I, I can write, and my writing moves people. <laughs> have you listened to um, what has happened to Upud Israel? Sure, sure. He's amputated. Yeah, sure. I think the story is almost similar to yours, but I love his spirit. I think he's even more confident than he's ever been. Sure. Just go watch his latest interviews. Incredible human being. Blaise Ryan said, Nanya, and thank you for being an inspiration. I actually would love to have you here. My orange. I've never interviewed my orange. And then you nanya and jack. I can't say nanya and I'm going to I'm not going to go to the time. It's all right. And then I'm going to go No, real, recognize real. We're looking forward to having him here. And let me say, Doctor, I just want to say to you, thank you for being an inspiration and thank you for not giving up on yourself. Because Amegoas, Omunimuntu, they've lived their lives like this, and then something drastic like that happens, and you're on a wheelchair. Other people give up. Yes. Other people end up having low self esteem forever. Mm. Other people just rely on handouts. You know, as fun as you I think that gave me time to self introspect and also to grow, you understand? Mm. So, yeah, now, obvious, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm a chairman. I'm not intended. <laughs> Excuse the pun, no, chairman. <laughs> yeah, well, sure. I push black business. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, sure. So yeah, man. There's no need to wait to say like to beat myself up to say with any nana. So what I have to do is what exercise and exercise. Hopefully, in the process of time, yeah, I'll be working. Nice. I think I'm, I'm also very inspired as, as to what you're saying. So many things could have happened psychologically to him after that. One of them being hating black people. Because mm. he was mugged by black people and he got injured because of black people. Omunyo Munto would have been like, mm. I'll never help them again. But instead, he found that to be like, no, I think potentially because of what's be happened. Blaming white people because it is white people who put black people in a situation whereby they find themselves that they have to rob. <laughs> Jeez. In no order to make, make hey, order to protect. No, I'm, I'm, not, not, I'm not protecting them, and, sure. and I'm not justifying as in easy. No. For instance, I'm not promoting that. But sometimes, when you look at our conditions, as Bagu as our talk, and sure. some people sometimes, a situation compel them to to do certain things. Sure. But I feel like uh, perseverance. And as me now, black consciousness saved me. And saying black consciousness, listening to Muhammad Ali, I'm a video I am confidence. I am the greatest. I'm better than I say I am. I'm I understand that instilled confidence gave me. Yeah. And saying Abu Makas I understand all those people are the people that say. Jeez, thank you so much. I think I think finding a source of inspiration, um, especially when you're in an un, uncomfortable, unnormal, abnormal 
I think it does a lot. Uh, a lot of these guys, uh, Abu Muhammad Ali, Abu Malcolm X, had somewhat uh, difficult pasts and they found enlightenment somewhere which, which kind of pushed them. Indeed. So I, I appreciate that you, you found black consciousness. I think it's, it's helped a lot of people in darkness, yes. especially when you look at this white supremacist world that we live in, yes. finding that voice inside exactly. or that speaks from outside to you inside so that you can fight another day. Yes, black consciousness is the remedy for all social ills in the black community, drugs and all that. Like, if you are self-aware, like to be black consciousness means that you are aware of yourself as a black person, you know that you are supreme. So you won't be putting things in your nose if you know that Ubanu and Mumuza, you understand? So uh, hence why I mean uh, each and every day when I wake up, I, I make sure would I prepare a piece, an article or whatever that was going to change the people, you understand? But mostly of my things is not just opinion, it's research and development. You know? Where do people find your writings? Because you say writing was yes. also where yes. you've reshifted yes. your energy. Uh, on Facebook is Vugatag. So my personal account is uh, Dr. Kulanis Kosana. But sure. if they can say Dr. Kulanis Kosana, uh, they will find that my writings one. All your writings but, are there. Uh, soon I'll be launching uh, my book called Ubuntu Economy. Thank you, sir. Yeah, okay. Ubuntu, Ubuntu Economy. Econo. Yeah, it's an economic program for black people. Nice. You yes. never answered me on PEE. Oh, PEE. If you support it. I don't support PEE. Why not? Because now, when you look at the genesis of PEE, PEE now was uh, firstly started uh, in, in 2003, if I'm not mistaken. It started as PEE. Sure. I think in 2007, uh, they started Sebafagana Nama Chinese and what, and then it was uh, named but termed as Broad Base Black Economic Empowerment. Triple PEE. So now, it also includes white women. You understand? The struggles of white people and black people are not the same. Mm. So the white woman has already has a privilege, but they also benefit from PEE. Mm. And also PEE is also used as a, a fronting channel. Tolaba, they find the book guiding for and then they start a name and then they call it, they say uh, Busiso, uh, 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 what you call uh, construction. So all the things that are trying to redress and address all the previous uh, economic inequalities which are still affecting us. We need to address them based on what? On, pro, on, on, on policies that are geared towards solving our problems of our mm -hmm. You understand? Not just our policies that are inclusive uh, for everyone because now the people who are receiving end of uh, e, 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 what you call economic racism, uh, land theft and all that are black people. Yeah. So we need like AMA policies that are going to emphasize only land reform and mm -hmm. as to how we can access uh, the wealth as black people, not within white economic infrastructure because black power, black economic power and white economic power cannot coexist because white power seeks to destroy whereas black power seeks to empower. Jeez. So you see there are cases of perspective. I don't know if I'm That's the only one who's getting the vibes of uh, Mr. Andy Lemkutama's interview a few weeks ago. Yeah. By the way, if you haven't checked it out, guys, on this very channel, go check out Mr. Andy Lemkutama's interview. We're hanging out with him here, myself and Peña. For some reason, this interview gives me that vibe. Yeah. Am I the only one? There's lots of similarities. I'm thinking of all the names now as he's speaking, because we've got the Malcolm X's, the Marcus Garvey's, Dr. Mm -hmm. Henry Clark, yeah. uh, that speak about various layers on... on on black power and, and the black economy. Yes. Um, I, I don't personally agree with separation, yes. but I fully understand why. Even people like o Oban Tubigo wanted a separate state for black. And they said, stop helping us, stopping aid. We don't need your aid because it's a poison chalice. Give us our space, leave us alone and let us uplift ourselves, which I think that's what the black consciousness programs are all about. Like, uh, speaking about separatism, separation, I believe in separation. Because you remember back then, uh, during Jim Crowism in the US, let's just use a classical case study. Yes. As in, so like, USA is a racist country, you understand? So you remember subsequent to the slave trade or whatsoever that was transpiring during the slave trade. Subsequent to slavery being abolished in, in America, uh, they started what the governor in Nantolewit, like there must be separation. 
black people must live in their own uh, spaces they must build their own businesses they must buy from uh, uh, their own shops which compelled black people to want uh, to start their own businesses which forced black people to buy black mm. you understand so uh, if you remember the black wall street uh, the successful uh, town in oklahoma in usa and then they destroyed it. they destroyed it you remember that township uh, it had black millionaires they had their own bus system they, they had their own law firms their own they had their own bakery they had their own uh, banks banks they had all, they had built everything their own institutions. oklahoma their own institutions it was black a separate state yes, yes it was they bombed it. they bombed it because out of jealousy because they saw which it, it was fruitful more than white businesses yeah even white people i want to mind they saw with to care they became jealous sure. so hence i'm just referencing that and also back to thing where la in in south africa uh during uh apartheid whereby it was separation uh artists were more pro-black during that time mm-hmm. the narrative was pro-black and then it changed post uh, 1994 seba fage makarin seba but u uh, u uh, uh, mama letambolo was cool what is not yet uhuru but we yes. didn't listen you understand so uh separate separation it, it compelled us which is, is easy to do for ourselves to have that self-determination so hence why i'm saying that let's try it because it worked for us i've got two questions do you think Okay, maybe first a comment. Uh, you know, I, I started the Buy Black movement yes. a while back before I sold out yeah. <laughs> and what, became what non-racial. No, you sold out. No, it's not. It's not a sellout per se. You sold out like 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 lux at the at the at the Pakistan shop. Jeez. Oh. You sold out fast like lux. <laughs> <laughs> I I get the wordplay. Uh, so I I haven't sold out. I still care very deeply for black people, but studying. Case studies are very important. Studying the history of what's happened to black people in particular, um, I think I've changed my fight because I think there's more of an impact working with certain people. Yes. I don't want to work with white racists. I don't want to work with racist Asians, for example. Yes. I want to work with people that want to help. Um, so I started the Buy Black movement and I'm now non-racialist. I'm now willing to work with anyone from any race, but that's me. But like I said, I understand why there's a need for, I guess what you'd call extreme sides so my first question is do you think black people need to self-sanction and i'm asking this from let's say a community perspective was you would you know like i'm a taxi route you can't operate and kono baba i'm a marshal yes. that check with ubano hambala i wasn't gonna in any taxi you want should we be having stuff like that for my tax shops uh spaza shops emakasi where we self-sanction and we force aggressively black people to do the right thing and, and buy from black Yes, yes. I you believe, know, I believe, and then uh, oh. before that, my my second question is going to be about if you think politics is is the solution for what you're trying to fight. Okay, now I'll start with the first question. Uh, I feel like all uh, industries should have uh, what you call associations. By way of example, uh, the taxi industry is the only black-owned industry. In, 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 in South Africa, it's the mm-hmm. only black in, in the, and uh, their competitive edge is that they have a, a, a an association that speaks for them. Hence why uh, the tax industry, they, they, some of them, they are not registered, but by the way, I'm a COVID relief. You understand? They have the Being power. Registered. No, some, some of them, they did, they did, because now sure. they, they, they have that power to say, with the most black businesses, then to I'm a, I'm a, I'm a relief. The answer is to marginalize lava. Obvious, most of black businesses are not rich, but they're sicker. So, a uh, taxi association ends and it protects uh, what uh, taxi owners and the industry at large. And then, let's say for instance, we have an association for abantu, our kundinwe, our babas, and what what, so that we can what restrict uh, people. I want to mind you from outside. You sure. understand? I mean, we're coming in here and owning our 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 economy. Mm. You understand? And I think there should be also be a territory tax. For instance, in order for Pakistanis to to uh, to have our shops, they must pay a territory tax, and that's uh, separate from the tax le yakon. So they must give back to the community. You understand? And you can't be coming from maybe. 
uh, another community and come to another community and ship out the wealth and not give back because that's the problem that most people have. Most people they don't protect um, a Pakistan or a Somalians from uh, is you know, for where when they attack their shop because they don't give back. Sure. They don't do nothing for the community. You understand? So my colors new and none. Guba you. Hence why we go and play con shop. They are not limited. Magens they were listening to this yeah. because they are part of the community. You have a bank of sun and a band. You understand? Sure. The so each and every community, I feel like uh, when I'm a community meeting, we speak about this. Young Toya Malento. Each and every month, you continue on your shop. You keep my teaser that will be. Advocate in terms of maybe building recreational centers within that community, or else you don't operate. You understand? Sure. This thing of uh, a free economy, which uh, you can come in and and, and, and operate uh, and, and ship out the wealth, it doesn't work. And also, nama nama big chain stores and all that. I don't think they are doing enough. Sure. You understand? Uh, in order to to advocate to the community, just take out the wealth and just leave. Yeah, so, you're, so you agree we need self-sanctioning and the best way to do that is yes. through associations? Yeah, through associations, all black owned businesses, let me say all black owned, and then no, not black owned, all industries sure. should have um, associations For that black. protect them. Okay. And I made a classical example with uh, the hair care industry, you understand? To so say with your care that you are a certain number of maybe people from outside are allowed to operate by a saloon, so only a number, you understand? So that since in that what we are putting what we are putting Africans first. Sure. Yeah. So some governments, like for instance in the UAE in Dubai, sure. you can't just go into Dubai and own a hundred percent of the business. Yeah. Yes. Half of that business must be owned by the locals. Yes. You know, such su such policies yeah. that have been enforced by the government makes a lot of sense yes. to benefit the local economy. Makes a lot of sense. Do you think politics is the solution? I feel like uh, politics are controlled by the economics. You understand? I feel like if people can own their economic realities, they can control and capture the politics. Okay. You understand? That's what Dr. Claude Anderson says. Yeah, yeah, via the power economics. Yeah. Boom! Yeah, I'm oh, okay. I was going to also <laughs> recommend this book at the end. You know. sure. So, so. If, for instance, Abu Abu Rupert, they need not to be uh, at the parliament and what, what they are just controlling things via remote. They yeah. fund elections, they fund politicians, so that they can have control of our policies. That, yeah, end end them. that end up favoring them. So us as black people, we are the ones who are supposed to be capturing Abu Chulas Malim. What you lost, Malima, should be with Nana. So with some, some dictator, with ends again. Sure. Yeah, I told him to ganjal, because now I'm a politician. I need to change over now. Say by choile, eh, minyonyo. They are used to being funded. You understand? Sure. And then man, when you get funded, you have to honor the promises and all that. Yeah. So I feel like if us, we can fund the politicians so that they can create fiscal and monetary pay, uh, policies that favor us as black people because when you see even the policies the policies are anti-black some of them are good on paper but mm -hmm. the implementation is not good sure what 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 what, what i was saying earlier and we to interview okay, in, in Negeza, that mr andy and vibes for instance like what is just said now when and mr andy and Kutama was saying the anc is not favoring black people yeah. It's just there to. He like said anti black. Yeah, he said it. He actually said it that way yeah. specifically. They are white supremacy in black. Man. That's what he. he, he but no, but basically, how he put it, he said the ANC is literally just managing yeah. the economy on behalf of other people as opposed to Ser uh, serving yeah. the black masses. Exactly. Yeah. I've got two more questions. Uh, the first one is speaking from experience and from the cries of so many black people out there, how do we fix black businesses now? So we want to get rid of maybe the white businesses, the Asian yes. businesses, the foreign businesses. I don't think we want to get rid of them. I don't think that's what No, let's not say get rid. Maybe it's bad English. My apologies. Okay. We, we want to start supporting more of our own. Yes. Over but now the comparisons are always pricing. They don't have stock. The service is bad. Yes. So how do we fix the mindset and the behavior of, of black businesses so that even the black people who want to support black aren't complaining about the same thing? And Uguti... For five days, you're forcing me now to go somewhere else. Or you're rude to me. 
I'm asking to Alonso support NHL and Wamanje is nigeza ni ni mali yetu. How do we fix the mindset of black businesses? Because a lot of us have received bad I feel, service. I feel, from black I feel businesses. like I feel like self hate. If we can fix the self hate and inferiority complex that we have as a black people. I remember when T.K. Spoo uh, studied with more fire. People started being about Dr. C. We say, Kuluma Ngokti Ngowiti, it has too much caffeine. <laughs> and what all of a sudden, I'm talking about my expert. Yeah, about my expert. You understand? <laughs> that's, that's self hate. Most of the time, people they are self hating and they masquerade as if like this is the reason that we don't support black businesses. But most of the time, it's self hate. I'm talking about taste more fire or whatsoever, but he already has a negative critique about him more fire. Then since we're in the and another thing important thing is what is for us to own our means of production. Mm. Understand? When we more own our means of production, then we have the power to determine our own price. Mm. And then no recession, uh, no fixed prices or whatsoever form the case us shall prosper. Because Come now on. we're in control of the production, then we can determine our prices so that we can price at low. Mm. So Malcolm X once said that the reason why black people charge uh, high prices is because they buy their products from what from the europeans and the orientals mm. if a black person can start to produce uh, the the goods that he sells he will make uh, more mm. you understand and in the pricing now is a is a is a, is a change right? so, that sure. so i think uh, owning means of production and also changing our mentality in terms of self-love so i think uh, Vugatak is a perfect platform we see our one to buy him. Sure. Yeah, I understand it because sure. there we're pushing black love and all that. Hence why I advocate for us to create more black owned media avenues because our daily sun they are not sleeping. All those white owned avenues are not sleeping. They yes. are constantly pushing that anti black narrative which uh it perpetuates that man said to Chin if it's black it's inferior. Mm. Yeah, it's all my into it. So I feel as if also Land is the basis of economics. I think it all also boils down to the land question because in order for you to own means of production, you need to have land. Mm. Yeah, and say, I, told, I, told, I, told. Sure. I think uh, the thing of talking about land now, I think maybe it's in way room, over. It's way we over can't talk now. anymore. Can't talk anymore. I think we should come up with uh, ways as to how we implement. But I think now if we can change the mind, then we can change our behavior. Mm. Because there's a great African scholar by the name of Dr. Amos Wilson. Uh, he once said with, uh, Japan doesn't have possess much of natural resources. I understand. Mm. But uh, it managed with the, the invested to the education system. Yeah, but they invested on their education system. So their education system is Japanese oriented. Sure. You understand? So now it creates people who are going to be pro Japanese. So all the solutions that they formulate are going to solve Japanese people's problems. And so they don't have much of resource, but they control our resources in Congo because they're socialized within whatever you do, you must add value to your own kind. When sure. you go to a certain country, for instance, Bebana say USA, but you want nuclear ideas, you understand, from the nuclear bomb. And then Banzani come back to a China and add value to that thing. So that's how we need to think. We need to put black first. And that's not a uh, racist. Even if it's racist, it means that you love your own person, people. So this is my last question. I know Spuda normally asks about uh, resources that people can can plug into that you know. Yeah. I was clever, are, are you really a doctor? Oh, I Dr. Kumalo. Yes, I'm Dr. Maling. So actually, it's fun because the name doctor was given uh, by, 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 by my followers, you understand? Because I constantly drop knowledge, I constantly do research and development. So I need not uh, be validated by white people, you understand? Be, being knighted or being given mentally by white people. So the people call me doctor because they see you with maybe I have some wisdom in me you know, I'm told. but I did I have a, a, a varsity degree honorary doctorate from the streets yeah, from, from the people but, but, uh, but I don't want to even mention that so I'm saying that I'm Dr. Kulanis Kosana from the University of Self Education and you were given by the people yes by the people and I was like accepted 
It's concerning your book to recommend. I'm going to ask you to recommend three today as well. Uh, some people last week said you didn't want, you didn't recommend anything. Sure. And I think some people take that seriously. Um, three books to recommend. Maybe let me start with one. Today I'm going to recommend a book by Munima Oli over to Batabi Lemureki. Oh, but Tabi is a good friend of mine. Jeez. Oh, are you serious? Melissa Mletem Kukuin. Oh, do you know her? Good friend of mine. Oh, I'd love amazing, to see her. Amazing human being. Wow. But anyway, sorry. Anyway, it's Jeez. a dope book, guys. No, I'm we're going to get him Kukuin. Melissa well, Mletem Kukuin. Be dope. She must sure. come to this shack here. Um, but Tabi Mureke, the name of the book is How I Started My Business with my 1 million rands from the bank. That's the book I recommend. Throw one in there. Oh, uh, Dr. Dr. Amos Wilson, Blueprint to Black Power. Dr. Amos Wilson. Yeah, Dr. Amos Wilson, Blueprint to Black Power. Or oh, Dr. Cloud Anderson, uh, Power No Mix. Or oh, 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 Black Black Wealth and White Wealth. Black Labor, White Wealth. Black Labor, White Wealth. Yeah. Uh, I think on the topic of today, uh, one book that sparked black consciousness in my mind was I Write What I Like, Stephen yes. Bantubigo. Um, another book that people love quoting very much, um, Capitalist Nigger, Chika Onyani. I don't advocate for that one because now uh, on that book, like, is portraying Africans as lazy. I read that book, like, I know it at the back sure. of my mind. Like, he's portraying Africans as lazy. He's trying to say, he's, he's, there's a part where he say, whatever a white person does it, imitate him. Whatever, and so you must sure. read in there, but whenever you read books, but even all the books, when you read them, you must read them with an eye of a mind, you understand? Oh, I fully agree. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So, so the, reason, the reason I'm recommending it is because the biggest take out from that yes. book, outside of this, because I know Togo Taylor um, promotes self-love, yes. which is why he's got an issue with what he's saying. Yeah. The biggest take out is the spider web doctrine, yeah. which is the concept of getting money to circulate amongst ourselves. So that's the reason I... I promote, uh, promote it, but the re I, I like the idea of whatever we recommend that people read, read it with an open mind so that you don't just eat it, Jay. see what works for you. And if you're like, no, this doesn't work for me, you can put that aside. But the book itself is very powerful, I think, to this day. We'll see you in the next episode. Guys, grow the platform. Make sure you subscribe. Let as many people know about this platform. We have to be on 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year. Thank you, son. Out. This is The Hustler's Corner.